Hi, everybody, and greetings from Astoria, Queens in New York City. This is my study where I've um, probably sat most of the time for the last five years since I um, moved to this apartment. Well, I've been living in New York City since 2001. This is actually my fourth apartment. So it's the fourth week of self-isolation from because of COVID-19. And you see I have the hair to show for it. It's the new style. It's called the all the barbershops are closed. No super cutters style, which is becoming fashionable now. But I'm home and don't have to wear a mask. Well, the reason why I'm making this video is because I came across a box that I've been keeping over the years of things that were written down, made by my dad. And I thought this might be of most interest to my nephews and my favorite niece, but maybe also um, would be nice to, um, nice for my sisters, for Lori and Ronnie and um, Steve, Rob to see. And I might send a copy or a link to um, Morty and Elaine they'd like to see it and feel free to share this uh, don't put it on Facebook now look I am um, just talking <laughs> I don't have a script I am making this up as I go along so bearing that in mind I have the uh, box here and you see I have written AXL on the side. Arthur Lazarus did not have a middle name, so when he initialed things, he would put an X there, which is why I sometimes called him Axel or Axel Grease. Uh, maybe he would have liked that. Anyway, this is a box of his things that I've um, kept over the years. So it's not really organized. I, I sorted through it and I thought I would show a, um, a few things, um, some of which might be surprising, other things you might have predicted. Um, what I'm rattling around here now are um, the instructions. I show it better in the light. Uh, there we go. Handwritten instructions. And some pages are typed for three different games that I think my dad dreamt up when he, probably in high school. Um, there's a game here called Blast Off. Um, there's another game here um, called uh, Sabotage. And I have all these sheets of paper complete with holes. Um, let's sabotage and there's another one here uh, called Rocket Race and um, I could read um, the first page of the instructions for Rocket Race I can read some of this Rocket race can be played by two, three, or four persons. Each player is represented by one of the rocket ship tokens. All the rocket ships line up behind the takeoff line in order to begin their trip around the solar system. And then the equipment, the game board, four rocket ships, and some various cards. 
The game board consists of the path of the race showing the takeoff and landing lines, starting and finishing lines where the rocket ship may stop in order to receive bonus credits. Well, um, I think I have the um, board. Uh, it's incredibly fragile and I have taped it together. Um, here's the takeoff. I guess they would go around and, and then it says, it says landing underneath. Now this thing used to spin. I, I've just attached it with masking tape for now. Um, there are little pictures of planets, Saturn and the moon. Um, this kind of looks like a control thing with little dials and meters. I, I know that there were slides in this slot. I think I, I found one of the slides once and I picked it up and it just turned into dust um, in, in, in my hands. Um, so I'm, it's been barely held together now, um, but I, I have tried to save it over the years. Um, it's quite, um, quite valuable to me. Uh, so that's the game board for, um, for Rocket Race. So, as I um, continue through this box of artifacts here, um, I have a, um, a folder here. Now, um, as many of you know, um, Dad was, for a period of about 10 years, since 1960s and 70s, the uh, music director for the Temple Beth Shalom Chorus. And here's a list of songs, it says Temple Shalom Choir, liturgical songs for choir and congregation and it has Havenu Shalom and on that day and so on. There's about 64, list of about 64 songs here. Um, I have a couple of copies of that. But then um, you might not know is that um, Ed made almost all the, the arrangements. He knew um, the uh, members of the chorus very well, probably never more than 12 people or so. So they were all friends. And he would spend hours um, working on these arrangements. Um, I, I am not going to try to pronounce the title. I'll leave that to Lori, um, and nor do I know what it, it means. Um, but, um, <laughs> Interesting uh, to me as a musician. Chords like that. Mm -hmm. um, those are chords that are more typical of barbershop harmony. It shows my dad's interest in sepsqua. forgot this um subsqua i don't know society for the for the preservation and something something for barbershop quartet singing in america subsqua um, art lazarus so even in his um presumably serious Choral arrangements, you find um, influence of barbershop quartet singing, which is kind of interesting. Anyway, here are pages and pages, and some of them are handwritten, um, like this one as well. Um, this is the original copy. And if memory serves, he would um, write uh, these arrangements in pencil first at the piano. And I remember Dad's working very long hours at the piano, working out the, working out these arrangements quite quite intricately, writing them on pencil, and then um, 
writing over the pencil in ink. Once he knew he got it, the ink would certainly reproduce a lot better. Um, ah, Emmett, hello, hey. This is one I can remember pretty well. It's a, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to play the whole thing. It's a whole thick volume of, of arrangements. There's dozens and dozens of arrangements. Um, it's a um, favorite of Ronnie's. This is um, the uh, first page of Dad's so-called Exodus Cantata, written for children, um, which tells the story of uh, Moses leading the Exodus from Egypt. And um, this is the famous, um, we're on our way. Um, I'm not going to sing it. Um, this, is a couple of this is um, evidently my arrangement of we're on our way. Um, this has some things that my, my dad wouldn't write. My dad would play it more like um, um, and if I re recall right, the original um, went like this, we're on our way, we're on our way. It was actually um, my uncle Ned who suggested we're on Way and a clap. We're on our way. And give um give Ned Rose um, some credit where where credit is due. We're on our way. Is um, refers to the Exodus from um, from Egypt. And there are about ten songs in this, and I have quite a um, pile of paper. Um, Moses does not want to accept credit um, for the exodus himself, self-effacing, she was. And I came across these two, um, let me see if I can pose it so you can see it. Sure, right at the bottom, there we go. Um, and pages of, of some math and geometry. Um, my dad wrote out, um, I, I think I held on to these because they were indeed mine. Um, um, when um, Dad was helping me with my um, uh, geometry, um, uh, trig homework, and he would uh, take the time to write stuff out for me. Um, here, uh, evidently trigonometry um, of, of some sort, and it's certainly not my handwriting, uh, complete with coffee stains or something. Um, next, I, I found um, from uh, uh, dad's childhood, um, maybe uh, a music notebook that he kept from about age 12 um, 17, 18 years old. Uh, unfortunately, there's no date this music writing book. When you first open it up, very charmingly, um, there's some tic-tac-toe games here. Sometimes wondered um, with, with whom he, he played tic-tac-toe. Maybe it was with my Uncle Morty or his sister June. Um, I really have no idea. I've been with his parents. We may never know, but anyway, um, I, I can tell from the um, the handwriting that it's it's not a grown up's handwriting. 
Um, it is musically literate. Um, and, and someone who's working very hard uh, to do a good job. And it, it's very typical uh, for young musicians to, to purchase a, a book like this and to make it like, as professional as possible and write one, um, one short piece after another. Uh, upon finishing it, um, I have something you can be proud of. I found this um, piece right towards the, uh, the very end. Um, it's called uh, Walking Down a Dark Street. And, um, and there's all we have. Um, I have page one. Um, well, I'll play you a little bit of it now. It's, it, it so happens I can play the piano. Um, this may be the um, the only performance of um, walking down a, a dark street by Art Lazarus, uh, or at least the, um, the premier performance since about 1940 or so. So it goes like this. Um, that's what we have uh, walking down a walking down a dark street. Continuing on um, deeper down the box, found the, um, the typed manuscript for um, a. Um, Dad's um, proposed libretto for a a Phaeton cantata or opera that we were going to collaborate on um, together. It was written um, around the late 1970s, and if I recall uh, correctly, um, uh, my dad was in the hospital for a uh, a while. Um, and having a having had a heart attack and um, then needed he needing a project while he sat in his hospital bed, so he, he wrote um, this Phaeton um, libretto. Um, All around the world is quiet now. Heaven, sea, and earth restored again. The great upheaval halted in its course, signaled by a blazing falling star. And though great Zeus did strive to mend it all, a day went by without the sun to shine. How sad to think that this catastrophe that ripped the earth, disfiguring its face and filling flowing streams with molten rock, could occur because of youthful pride. That's the, um, the opening prologue for um, my dad's uh, Phaeton opera libretto. Um, I regret, um, despite many efforts, I, I was never able to set it. I just didn't know what to do with it. That's pity, uh, but that's the way it goes sometimes. <laughs> the best intentions, it doesn't work out. They did a good job on the libretto. Um, another thing that may be of interest here, I have multiple copies of, of this. Um, I'll just show it to you, but here, read that. Um, 
that um, my um, dad wrote at some point a um, an eight to ten page paper on hypnosis, and and I do recall his being very interested in, in hypnotism. Uh, he um, he laid it out. Um, I never have had this for decades. I never tried to do it. But um, let's see, um, there's um, page nine here. Um, he has this admonition. Um, Hypnosis is not a tool to be played with. Foolish experimenting with a person's subconscious mind can be a dangerous thing. I have always adhered to a code of rules in my practice of hypnosis. And I hope you will follow this. I, I like my dad's reference to his practice of hypnosis. I, didn't, I wonder who he did it with. Who did he hypnotize? Uh, maybe my mom. Never give your subject any suggestions or tell him anything when there is a possibility that may make him unhappy. Um, refrain from giving your subject suggestions which make him appear foolish, immoral, or stupid in front of an audience. Remember, he has given you as a hypnotist his wholehearted cooperation. He relies on your good judgment and taste, and so on. Always work with an audience. I wonder what that feels like to be hypnotized in front of an audience. Let your audience and your subject enjoy the sitting, but try to do more than that. Let your audience understand that hypnosis can be not only a pleasant diversion, but can be a wonderful instrument when used by a competent doctor in curing diseases of the mind and the body. Well, very nice um, copies of this. If anybody wants one, let me know and send you like two pages. Um, one more item is um, worth worth showing. Um, somewhere in the 1950s, 60s, um, Ed collaborated with somebody named Bob Humberg, who I, I don't think I ever met, on a um, musical called Flaccid Forever, which is a, a satire on the federal government. Um, I, I don't know. I, I think, I'm going to guess it was the Truman administration, but it might have been the Eisenhower. Um, it was at least sometime in the 1950s. And I, I, I do remember a performance of it, if I can call it that. It was probably my dad with his friends, Larry and, and Donnie, sitting in the living room. Or maybe maybe Bob Fromberg came over for dinner sometime. I, I just have no, no recollection. Um, but maybe some of it should be heard. Um, this was right on top, and it seems like is nice a song as, as any. Uh, they all have kind of a nice Frank Lesser, uh, Hoagy Carmichael charm about them. Um, this is a song called A Cheer for the Princess. Our lovely princess now is here, as you can surely see. So give her one long rousing cheer. For all of us agree, her beauty has no rival, her loveliness no peer. So for the princess's arrival, give her a good long cheer. Oh, it's kind of nice. I have no idea how this is supposed to be played. Um, I'm just taking a guess, but something like this. <laughs> supposed to be played. Something like that. Right? 
it's it's rather charming. Um, it connects well with um, oh, 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 uh, Dad's um, earlier songs. That's um, <laughs> placid forever. Are there any uh, Broadway producers out there? I'm sure it's totally politically incorrect. Um, well, those are the main things I have in the box. I'm going to show you uh, one more thing and um, happily uh, bring my my mom into this. So I have um, his his and hers matching um, artists' drawings here. I know towards the end of their lives, they um, took a drawing class together. And um, rather nice. This is my, I, I don't want to compare them directly. Uh, my dad was many years had had a long jump start on my mom in, in learning how to draw and, and paint um so i don't really want to compare them directly um this is rather nice by by my my mom um and it's very nice to see that you see it's a uh a dock or a pier and um she is experimenting with uh, perspective here and even the sailboat in the right um does does um taper off as it goes to the vanishing point. She's got some nice seagulls in the back. Um, and um, it's also by my mom, it indicates um, it's, a, it's an attempt to find their perspective on a, a vase or, or a cup. Oh, see this one. Um, similarly, for my mom, um, trying to uh, draw a bottle uh, with the correct perspective. You know, we'll, we'll give her a few more months. Uh, she might have nailed it. There's one very nice one here somewhere. Um, oh, here's a, um, some flowers uh, by my mom. But, you know, for somebody who had, uh, oh, maybe two months of um, art lessons, like she was sitting around watching Bob Ross. She was actually drawing this. It's pretty good. Um, she's got a little ornament um, on the flower pot. She's got the um, perspective in the window. You can tell that the um, through the window we are we are seeing a distance. Okay. That's pretty pretty darn good. Very nice, Mom. And, um, oops, everything falls on the floor. Um, you know, my dad, as I said, he was, he was a few months ahead. Um, in the same, same doc scene, he, he managed it with um, some, uh, some color. And um, so uh, it's, it's pretty nice. Um, it was very um, natural, natural talent. I know his later, later works are, um, are abstractions. It's, as we all we all know, or the, the Moses from a um, or a magazine clipping, um, but he, you know, a few few months of lessons. He, my dad was he got the nice perspective on the on the bottle there, and um, pretty good cup of fruit. So that's all I have to uh, to show for for today. Um, is there anything else you'd like to see uh, from this collection? Uh, let me know. I'm happy to uh, take a photo. You know, or if it's something that can travel, like some pages from hypnosis or um, from the liturgical arrangements, uh, let me know. And um, that's enough for now. Uh, good health uh, to everybody. Um, Let's hope you all come through this well, and uh, best best wishes. Um, let me hear from you all sometime, uh, and uh, be well. <laughs>